Hey guys, Bond over here. So we're prepping this 40 by 90 barn for the in-floor radiant heat. And I'm going to try to show you how we do it and uh, try to simplify it a little bit for you. If you have somebody do this in-floor radiant heat for you, they charge a fortune usually. So, uh, you know, it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money to do this, guys. I believe you can do it yourself. I'm going to try to help you. So what we do on this barn here, this 40 by 90 barn, we divided it into three different pours because I don't have uh, I, I don't have enough to get a pump in here and try to pump this whole thing and get enough people together so this section we're doing here right now is an apartment they're gonna have a little living quarter in the back so um, like I said this this is here is 30 by 40 so um, you know we went the 30 foot deep and 40 foot wide because that'll divide this barn into the three pieces and that just happens to be what the apartment is too is the the back 30 foot section so I got a thousand foot roll of packs here guys it's oxygen barrier packs and I always put electrical conduits up through the um, where the concrete gets poured I'll put a one inch electrical conduit and I'll stuff my pipe up in there and I'll start running my tube and down the wall depending on where I start and on this one here we're going to divide it into three 400 foot loops because that comes out even and I'll draw you a little graph here in a little while kind of explain it a little better on a piece of paper but right now we're just trying to get 400 foot of tubing on here because um, like I said with the tubing length if you can keep this tubing real close to the same length all your loops are going to flow evenly and you won't have to spend a lot of money on expensive headers with flow control valves and everything in them they'll just flow nice and even for you so that's what we're doing here we're trying to get that 400 foot guys so with this thousand foot roll these rolls have markings on them with the footage right on there so what we're doing here we're gonna try to roll it out until we get 600 foot left on this roll and that's what that's the number we're looking for and uh, we just keep rolling it out I know about where it's gonna happen because I know I can take this barn and my wire mesh it's a six inch grid on this wire mesh so every other row of wire mesh is how you run this and uh, I know that my wire mesh is five by ten so I can figure two rows of wire mesh is going to be ten foot so that's going to be one third of my building so right here right now we're trying to look at the tubing you can see we're checking out the length, trying to figure out where we're at. And we realize we don't have enough to go back down 40 feet and come back. So I'm going to roll this tubing right out here. That's what we're doing. We're looking at the numbers until I see 600 feet. And then I cut it right here. So now we're going to work backwards. We stuffed it up through there. And we're just going to work backwards. That way we keep our tubing at the 400 foot mark. It's almost impossible to, to figure out where to make that loop if you don't go backwards. So... We start back at the manifold and we're working our way backwards, tying it down. And then wherever this falls, it falls, guys. It's just going to be where it's at. See how I'm going to pull this down and we're just going to tie it and it didn't make it all the way to the end. So had I went all the way to the end and came back, I wouldn't have 400 foot. I would have had over 400 foot. So that's how we do that. And then I'll kind of show you here on paper, like I said how we did it it'll be easier to explain but here we go guys I, I grabbed that 600 foot that's left on my thousand and now I'm gonna run this out stuffed it in the start and we're gonna run it down and we're gonna continue this this loop that we shorted ourselves on right here we're gonna turn we keep it one foot away we're gonna turn here and work alongside of that and try to get back on track to finish up that one loop that we were, we just shorted ourselves on. So we go down a little short section here. We're going to come back up. Right here where it meets it again, I'm going to turn again. I'm going to head back. Now we're back on track. We're back on our full length again. So I'm going to roll that out. We're just going to keep tying it down. And then we're going to turn. And now we can go back up the full length of the building again. Our it's going to be a little under 40 feet now because we have the um, three lines that go to the header. So now these lines are actually a little bit shorter because right here we're going to turn. 
We're going to stay a foot away, and I'm going to turn right there. So th these lengths of this tube are a little bit shorter than that first run. You know, they're not quite 40 anymore. They're probably 38 or whatever. But that don't matter because we're going to run this tube until my 1,000-foot roll is down to 200 feet. And then I know my second loop is at another 400 foot. So that's what we're doing here. We're just going to keep running back and forth. We're using tie wraps on this guy, zip ties. Um, sometimes we'll use the little metal twisty ties that you tie rebar with. Um, they're cheaper. You can buy them at um, the box stores. Um, you can get a thousand of them for 20 bucks. So they're a little cheaper than the, um, the zip ties. And you don't have to cut them either. Zip ties, you got to cut the tails off them. If you don't, they'll pop up into your concrete and give you fits. So um, I don't know. We just had a bunch of zip ties left from a job we did a couple days ago. So we're using them up. But uh, I think they might be a little bit faster. But you do have to cut them, like I said. So we just keep running, guys. Like I said, just keep running back and forth. And we're going to do the same thing when we get... You know, we're, we're just about two-thirds of the way done with this thing. I'm going to start checking my numbers on my tubing. Right in here, I'm starting to look at the numbers on the tubing. I'm trying to figure out, okay, where are we at with tubing? We look like we're two-thirds of the way done here. I'm counting the grids. I realize, okay, I don't have enough to go all the way down and back, so I'm going to head out. I'm going to cut it at 200 feet right here, guys. I'm going to snip that tubing off at 200 feet. Just like we did on the first time and then we're gonna go back right here stuff the end of the back up into our header and we're gonna start heading backwards again backwards from the manifold where the manifold is gonna be heading backwards then I know these first two loops are exactly 400 feet they're not you know they're 100 percent 400 feet right on the dot just tie it back and see how that one ended up a little bit different. Didn't, Still didn't quite make it to the end, but it, it uh, went a little farther than the other one. So then on the third run here, guys, I'm going to open a, another brand new. I got 200 foot loop left, so I don't have enough to continue. So I'm grabbing this uh, thousand, brand new thousand again, and we're going to finish this up, guys. Back again, starting where we started. At the manifold, we turn down. Now we're a foot. We, we cut another foot off the full length because we've run from that boiler over. So these ones will be a little bit shorter yet, again, from the second loops and the first loops. So we're doing that little, finishing that little one, that little loop that we were short again, right here. And now we're just going to head back up. Now, right here, we're finishing it up, that little short guy. And now we're going to turn and go full length again, guys. Right here. Now we're back to full length. We finished that little short guy that was, we shorted ourselves on the sec, on the last loop. Same thing. Just back up and forth. Like I said, right here, now I'm, i got to turn quicker because I'm a little bit shorter than I was on the other two runs. Same thing. We're just running along here. Guys, if you're new to my channel, my name's Ron Bond. I got a company called Bondo Built Construction. We do a lot of this kind of stuff, guys. A lot of concrete work. We're going to be pouring this floor, making a video. Uh, we, we got 100, 140 or something videos on here. Um, probably at least 100 of them are about concrete. We do other stuff in the winter, but we do a lot of concrete, guys. We build foundations out of Nadura. Um, check my channel out. If you're getting value out of this video, go down and smash the like button for me. And uh, think about subscribing to my channel. Um, all these videos are going to be real helpful to you. If you're just getting into concrete or you want to learn how to do your own radiant heat or maybe you want to build your own basement, um, I can teach you how to build your own basement right on my uh, YouTube channel. You can build your own new Dura basement just by watching my videos, guys. I've had people do it. They built their own, their own basements for their house. And uh, didn't even have any experience in it. So um, thanks again for my supporters, you know, the guys that are already on my channel that have been supporting me. Thanks. Um, doing real good on the channel. Anyways, guys, back to the video. 
stay with it because I'm going to explain this at the end on paper how we did this, but if it's not making sense to you. But this is really a lot easier than it looks. We're just running back down here. And when we finish this, we just went all the way down through till we finished this last loop. We finished it right up and we were we were like 10 feet off of being perfect on this, guys. We ended up with uh, 610 feet of tubing left. So we were within 10 feet on having exactly 1,200 foot of tubing. So it worked out real good. So these right here, we're going to cut it and we're going to stuff it up. And that's pretty much it right there, guys. Like I said, uh, I'll show you on paper and then I'll show you the finished product. I'll walk around and show you what that looks like. Okay guys, we got her done. Got all our tubing laid out. We put a board to isolate this part of the slab from the rest of the slab because this is gonna be an apartment, this section, and this is a workshop over here. So there's a 40 by 60, <coughs> excuse me, there's a 40 by 60 here, workshop. And then uh, this is 30 by 40 here. So we did uh, three 400 foot loops of tubing. The tubing's all the same length. So it should flow nice and evenly. Uh, we put foam around the edges. We put two inches of foam around the edges to, to stop all that. And this is how we came up out of the slab over here. Basically we did it that way because we snuck into this slab and then when we pour this side over here the 40 by 60 that'll all get cased in and then we'll put the rest of these up in here all these ones and that'll be the rest of the barn that'll heat the rest of the barn and that's how we did it we didn't spray foam this one we used board foam on this one okay guys so i'm going to try to show you how or explain to you how we do this radiant heat work put this tubing down how i figure it out um, the way i do it it's pretty simplified compared to uh, how a lot of people do it um, this isn't rocket science this radiant heat i mean people charge a ton of money for it and it's something you can do yourself if you figure it out right um, everybody says you need to keep your tubing at 300 foot or less we, we run up to 500 foot all the time, guys. We've been doing it for probably 10 or 12 years. And uh, I've never seen any difference between loops at 500 feet or 300 feet. It's pretty much uh, only difference is the pumps that you need to use. Um, if you're running 500 foot loops, you just need a pump with, that will overcome the head pressure, which head pressure, guys, is just nothing more than resistance to flow is what head pressure is. But uh, there's several pumps that'll overcome like five, um, at least five 500 foot loops without any problem at all, one pump. So um, there's no reason you can't run up to 500 feet, um, especially if you use a water heater for your heat source, because water heaters re work really good, like a 50 gallon water heater, high efficiency water heater works great for these systems. But um, I'll get back to how we lay the tubing out, guys. So this building that we're doing right now, it's 40 by 90, but we divided it, we divided the building into three different pores, trying to make it simplified so I don't need to get as much help. So um, the part we're concentrating now on is 30 by 40. So um, I drew out a little grid here. I didn't have any graph paper, but I just drew it out for you. So say this, this part is 40 and this part is 30 here. Well, this is not the scale either, so keep that in mind. But say you got your 40 by 30 section here of, uh, of wire mesh. This is my wire mesh. So what I try to, what you gotta remember guys is, so you got 40 by 30, that's 1200 square feet. So with that being said, when you're running this tubing, you wanna put the tubing, when it's in concrete, it works really good in concrete if you put it every foot, so Say these squares are six inches. It makes it real easy when you lay your wire mesh down. You just run your tubing. You know, every six inches, just count these. So if I run my tubing here, I'm gonna run my next loop 
two over, which is one foot. Real simple, right? So now I know that I got 1,200 square feet of floor to cover, and I want to divide that up, and I want to stay less than 500 feet. So to do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna say 400 foot loop works out perfect for this size. So that's what we did. We did 400 foot loops, and if you figure, and you know, we started over here, right here. With our, uh, that's where our manifold's gonna be. And I'll kind of draw you the first loop, but I took this, we were gonna, it's easier guys to run your tubing the long wise, because every time you run down here, you get to the end and you gotta turn and come back like that, and then turn and come back and you keep looping it like this. So to have less 90s, it's a lot of times, it's easier to divide your building up with the long wise, so. This being 40, I'm gonna say, okay, this is 30, so I need 10 foot grids, which worked out real nice if you look at the pictures of, of the um, floor that we did. Your wire mesh lands, you know, they're five by 10 sections, so I kind of made it easy that, you know, we had a 10 foot, you know, our seam was here and our seam was right here. So you had 10, 20, 30, so it was easy to divide this into three different pieces. So I, I'm gonna, pause the camera here and I'm going to draw like my first loop with the screen marker. I'm going to show you how we did the first loop and how we managed to keep the tubing right at 400 feet. So stand by. Okay guys, so we started up here where our manifold is going to be and we started running. We come in a little bit from the wall, grabbed one line of the wire mesh and we just ran down. Got to here, I kind of screwed that up, but we turned here we started running our loops. This is not to scale. So we run several of these loops, guys, until we got to a point on the tubing. I run thousand foot rolls usually. So when I'm running these thousand foot rolls, there's there's lettering or there's numbers on the tubing to tell you what length it is. So what I'm looking for is I wanna have 600 foot left when I first start my thousand foot roll because I'm running this at 400 feet. So when I got to a point, I kept checking the numbers on the tubing and I got to a point where, okay, I know I'm getting close to 400 feet, but I can't, I don't want to take this right back right now and go back because I'll end up short. So what I'll do here is I know that I don't have enough to go all the way back down to the end because this is 40 feet to go all the way back down. Now another 40, that's like 80 feet. So say I only have 50 foot left on the roll. What I'll do is I'll stretch this roll out way over to here and I'll cut the roll at the 600 foot mark. So now I know I got 400 foot of tubing and I gotta use that tubing up. So I'll take the tubing and I'll start backwards and I'll stuff the, tube, the tubing back up into the manifold here, the other end of the tubing. So now I got this big loop of tubing that I gotta use up, but I know I, I can't get all the way down to the bottom and or all the way down to the end and back. So I just start back feed my tubing. Let me set the camera down and show you. Okay guys, so I started back feeding from here. Like I said, I stuffed the, cut the tubing off at the 600 foot, they gave me 400 foot. I stuffed this up into the manifold and I worked backwards. And then I just kind of worked the tubing in to wherever it falls, guys, wherever, it, it's gonna fall so I have no waste. I have exactly 400 feet of tubing. So say it comes to somewhere around here, let's say, that's what we got. So we know right now that's 400 foot of tubing and we got a 1200 foot area. So we got exactly 400 foot. So because what I'm gonna say here is the most important part is to try to get these loops all the same length so that your system will balance itself out because uh, water will flow equally if all your loops are the same. It's thermodynamics, guys. Um, resistance to flow, like I said, head pressure. If you keep all these loops about the same length, the water will flow evenly. You won't need to spend a ton of money on balancing valves and special headers and stuff. You can just make up a copper header and your water will flow evenly in all your loops. So let me show you how we would handle the, the second loop, the next 400 foot loop. Okay guys, so I started drawing this next loop. 
started here run notice I'm keeping all my tubing a foot apart you got your six inch grid so I come down turn and now we got to finish up this loop that we had this short loop so just come down stay a foot apart when you start, start turning keep your grid turn come back down to here all the way to the end of your building you want to stay away from the wall come up and loop back and now we're back on track again see that so now we're back where we can just continue our long loops again and you're going to do the same thing again we're just going to continue these long loops back up through like this just keep going now you're back to a little bit less now because we've got these lines here so now when we get up to here and we turn we're gonna stay back away so these loops here are shorter than when we started and also we had to go all the way down to here before we started so the second loop here we didn't have to go or the second loop which starts here we didn't have to go all the way down to the end of the building we turned here and started so when you're doing this you got to realize okay this loop is 400 foot but it might not cover as many 40 foot lengths as this one because you had to run this long 30 foot run to get way over to here. So the same thing applies. We're gonna, we're gonna go down, we're gonna start this loop, like I said, go all the way around, boom, 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 back up, and just keep running our, what is it? Maybe it's not 40 anymore because we lost this section, but whatever this length happens to be, you're just gonna keep running it now until you know my thousand foot roll, I want to say, uh, 200 foot now because I cut 400 foot off of it so my thousand was down to 600 and now I want to put a 400 another 400 foot loop in so I'm going to run this tubing out until I end up with 200 foot left over on my tubing so same thing let me draw it out for you real quick kind of run out of grid here guys but just trying to get you the idea here so this the second loop we did the same thing we returned we made up this little section we were short we made that up we got back on track we just kept running until i was just about i'm looking at my tube and i'm saying you know what we're almost at 200 feet so i'm gonna cut it at 200 feet and i'm gonna stuff again i'm gonna stuff the opposite end of the tubing back up in here back up into my um my electrical conduit sweeps where my header is going to be. I got electrical conduit sweeps here that go up out of the concrete. I'm going to stuff it back in there and then I'm just going to, same thing, just finish up this loop wherever it may be, wherever this happens to go. This could be down here, it could be, it could happen to be all the way down to the end if you get lucky, but it probably won't. So then now we've put 800 foot of tubing in here, guys, and your last loop. You can just run it right down and through and if your square footage is on you're going to be really really close with that last loop these two loops are exactly 400 because the way we did it this last loop i think i was within 10 feet guys on my on my layout so i think uh you know i started a new thousand foot roll and i had like 610 feet left when i cut that first first one there so i ended up this last loop on me was 10 feet short which, which is nothing 10 feet is not going to change the way this system flows so now i know you know this 40 by 30 area where i started my header which was way over here because i needed to start it over here because i explained that in the video i'm gonna pour this other these two other sections that are over here and over here and I got to get tubing into it so I kind of snuck that header outside the slab there if you look at the video so that's how I lay out the tubing guys now it, if you can lay out the tubing if you can put this manifold right in the center 
that's the easiest way to do it if you can do it that way you can't always do it that way but if you have like this building and the the homeowner don't mind you putting the header right there that's the easiest way because it's pretty much if you divide it into three pieces like this you're going to be so close with your loops because you only got to run out a little ways here and then a little ways over here and your middle one will be just a little bit shorter and it will work out real easy you just divide your building into however many sections if it's 40 by 30 i would just put it here divide it into three sections and i would just go 10 foot on my grids and then 10 foot in the middle and then 10 foot here i'd use my grid pattern to divide it in you can paint some lines on your on your floor there and uh i'll link you guys up to a video on laying out tubing but this is just how we did this one just trying to explain it to you trying to shed some light on it, it it's a lot easier than it seems so uh you can do that you guys can put your own tubing down save yourself a lot of money just put down the loops the same length i've had to take them up a little bit before say you're running and it's not coming out right you can just cut the zip ties and move it a little bit you know it's not too bad just try to get those loops the same length the system will balance itself and uh you won't spend a lot of money on the header and life is good throw a water heater in there or a wood boiler or whatever you got whatever you want to heat it with and make sure there's good insulation under it and you'll have a great heat system i've built hundreds of these things